Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about Star Wars tabletop games, uh, some board games, miniature games, and even RPG. They're all from Fantasy Flight. Some are still in print. Some are out of print now and not producing any more content. Not out of print as such, actually. They, you still can get hold of them. Um, uh, but some are certainly not being produced anymore. Um, some have changed hands and lots of different things have happened. So I'll talk about each one and uh, what I think about each of those board games as we go through. Okay, uh, now a little bit about me. I am a Star Wars fan. I have been for, for most of my life. And um, some of these games really encapsulate the idea of Star Wars in slightly different ways. Now I'm going to start this conversation with this game here, Star Wars Rebellion. Now Star Wars Rebellion is literally the Star Wars original trilogy in a box. Um, you're playing as the Imperial and the Rebels, and it really encapsulates that really epic conflict between the two, as it says on the box. It is a very long game, but man, is it good. You're, um, as the Empire, you're building loads and loads of industry um, to try and search out and destroy the Rebels' hidden base. Now, this is not the hidden base, of course. Uh, the hidden base is off the board. As you go through, and the map is about four times the size of this, uh, so it's a big old map showing all of the star systems uh, that we know from the films and canon. And you're, as the Empire, you're going around, you're using your different characters to go and do missions or to send the fleet to different areas, start combat with uh, space combat. You're taking ground units, you're doing ground combat. But as the Rebels, and this is the beauty of this game, you decide on a hidden location for your base, but then you do these little skirmish missions, just like the Rebels do. You know, they haven't got the resources that the Empire has. So they've got to disrupt them as best they can, destroying um, different types of ship or industry uh, or, or, or getting people loyal to the Rebels and for their cause. So you're doing all of these missions as the Rebels, um, and sometimes you're going for a little fight. And yes, it's got the classic story story beats of the films. Uh, you've got Frozen in Carbonite. You've got Boba Fett trying to capture people. May not be Han Solo this time. You might go and capture uh, Admiral Ackbar, for example. Um, uh, you can turn people to the dark side. Um, you've got uh, the Death Star. You can blow up the Death Star. It's extremely hard. It's effectively indestructible, apart from the exhaust port which is one of the um, Rebels' objectives. So they could get that. And on a very, very limited number of things that you have to do, uh, you might possibly get that, uh, blow up that Death Star, get more uh, cause towards you and get you closer to that victory as a Rebel player. Uh, the Empire literally trying to find the uh, Rebel base and destroy it before the time runs out. It's so, so good. And every single time I play this game, it's about four hours long, I, it's just such great stories, really memorable stories. And um, if you enjoy Star Wars at all, this is my top recommendation to purchase. Um, it does play four players, uh, two on each side, but it really does shine as a two player game. Now, the second game is a relatively new game called Outer Rim. I've just recently purchased this, so I haven't played it much. Um, but man, it's a great game. It's a pick up deliverer game, really. In essence, uh, lots of different ways to um, to win the game. You've got uh, missions. So you've got missions that you can do like jobs. You can do bounties so you can try and find uh, your bounty and then effectively either eliminate them or capture them and take them to uh, the the location that you're going around. You've got like a rim. Uh, this is only part of the board. You've got a huge rim that goes round. And you're going from one place to another, traveling along. You've got patrols that are going past that you might fight, which can be worth VPs or it might just be a hindrance. You've got loyalties to the, the huts, the syndicate, Imperial and Rebel, which change as you go through the, the game. It might change what happens with certain jobs, whatever it might be. You're carrying cargo. There's illegal cargo that you can go as well. You can get by new ships. So this is one of the Obviously, the Slave One, this is one of the uh, later ships, the more expensive ships. You start with a starter ship where you've got different movement, attack and um, shield um, values. And you've got all these, um, what do you call them? 
you've got all these personal goals. So you've got a personal goal, you choose your 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 uh, bounty hunter or smuggler, and then you've got these goals. It's the same with the ships. Uh, whenever you get a ship, you've got a ship goal, and you're always trying to get fame. The first person to 10 fame wins the game. So that's what you're trying to do with that. You hire a crew, you get different crew. So it's got all the characters from Star Wars that we love. And it's a really, really nice game. Um, it works really well. It also plays solo, which is great um, for just learning the game and so forth. So I'm going to move from Outer Rim to a very popular game, uh, which is a tabletop miniatures game. So going away from board games and going on to tabletop miniature game just for this one time. This is Star Wars Legion and this is the Clone Wars expand, uh, core set. Um, and it comes with these, uh, these beautiful miniatures, if you don't mind painting. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the vast majority of my miniatures have been painted, of course, so if you look at my Rebellion uh, miniatures and in a bit, Imperial Assault. Um, so I've started painting these, I've got this relatively recently. Probably something I won't get straight in, get massively into because I've got so many games that I'm quite big into. Um, but it's it's really it's, it's it's a nice kind of streamlined tabletop miniatures game. Um, it's it's quite big scale again uh, where you're moving, but you're moving units rather than individual figures. I think that makes a big difference uh, to speed up gameplay, which a lot of tabletop miniature games you have to do miniature by miniature. Um, it uses, it, as with all fancy fight games, it uses custom dice, it uses uh, custom measurement and all the rest of it. So it's so do bear that in mind with all fancy flight games. They're not like just grab some D6 and then you can play the game. It, you have to get the necessary components. Um, but obviously tons of expansions for this. It's got the original core set you can get if you want the classic Empire and Rebel Alliance um, and all the characters from that. Um, Really nice miniatures in this one, and Atomic Mass Games have taken over uh, Fantasy Flight's miniature department now, uh, including X-Wing and uh, Star Wars Legion, and one that I don't have, uh, which is Armada. Um, so expect the quality of the miniatures to only get better um, from them. But yeah, Legion, I haven't played it much, uh, but it's, it's one I will start to play a lot more, uh, I plan to. Uh, it just... It, it's very, it seems very streamlined uh, in the kind of demos that I've played um, and I'm looking forward to playing that more. So that's Star Wars Legion. Obviously a lot more money to be put into that. Uh, that should be said for these. Rebellion has got an expansion uh, which ties on to Rogue One uh, kind of expansion. If, if you want it, you don't have to have it to play. So you're just buying that one game. Same without a rim. It's one game, one buy. There may be expansions coming out for that. Legion, now we're going to differences from the next few games where there are many, many expansions, of course. Um, building your army, different armies, all costs a fair amount of money. And of course, you know, a big part of this is the hobby as well for Star Wars Legion. Do you enjoy um, man, um, uh, assembling miniatures, painting miniatures? Uh, is, that, is that side of things what you want to get into? Then this is a great Star Wars uh, game and I wanted to go for Clone Wars because it was more of a more of a tabletop battle uh, than what I felt was Rebel Alliance. I didn't feel that Rebel Alliance really are big skirmish battles. You know, uh, I thought this would be more fitting. The Clone Wars, X Wings, the other one I've just dabbled in. I've got to be honest, I don't play this much. Um, but if you like ship combat, like dog fighting, then X Wings fantastic. They have released the two uh the rules 2.0 um so if you buy this now you'll get the updated rules which have changed a few things this is the 1.0 um edition so i i i haven't played if i'm being honest i haven't played x-wing for a very long time i just like the ships uh you got like slave one here for example all pre-painted must be said okay so these are all pre-painted so you get them in um glorious detail and that's a massive positive adds the price up a little bit more um but fantastic and you've got things like your classic X-Wing. I mean, how can you not love that? Uh, it's fantastic. And then you've got different characters. You've got the classic characters like Luke Skywalker, but then you've got some other uh, ones. You, you've got campaign modes. Uh, there's just a ton of content for this. A huge scene for X-Wing miniatures game, as well as Legion, a huge scene around the world for these games. Um, but yeah, a really nice using um, templates, measurement templates. You dial in your move you're going to make 
preempt move that you're going to make um, at the start of the round and then you reveal those and, and then you go through depending on their initiative on their numbers up here um, and then they move and then they attack and then you go through that so it's a very popular game um, it is a nice game I just don't play it much at all to be honest um, but definitely worth it and the of course the other one from this is Armada, which is X-Wings, but on the bigger scale, on the galactic scale. So you've got the capital ships and so forth. I hear that's better than X-Wing. And uh, it, I'm, I'm, I'm very sceptical about trying it because I don't want to get into another game, to be honest. Imperial Assault. Now, this is one of my favourites. Uh, it's got a special part, place in my heart. I, I really do enjoy this game. This is a miniature ground battle game, okay? It's based on a campaign game, but it's also a tactical miniatures game. And I played I played the tactical miniature game uh, quite a bit uh, where you build up a team with combat cards and it's 1v1 on a map, uh, one squad against one squad, um, trying to uh, hit objectives on that. And it's, it's, I loved, I actually really liked that. I thought it was a little bit like a tabletop miniatures game, but on a board game. And it, I loved it, but they've, They've not really followed that through. The community has actually picked it up now. And in the UK Games Expo, I did actually notice that they were running a tournament for the crowd-produced or, or fan-produced uh, rule set of uh, Imperial Assault. But the campaigns that you get in this, and I've literally got everything for this game. This is a classic fantasy flight thing where you buy the core set and then to get all the special characters, to get new worlds and all the rest of it, you pay for expansion boxes, expansion boxes, more expansion boxes. And then suddenly, hundreds of hundred pounds later, you've got a huge number of miniatures. So in this game, you play um, not famous um, characters. So these made up characters, but you've got like Luke Skywalkers and you've got the classic um, characters in the game as well, as well as Stormtroopers, the, um, uh, the droids, probe droids, uh, Darth Vader, of course. And everything else it uses uh, custom dice as per always but i really like the custom dice effect of it it's a really really nice game um that you know as i as i keep getting new games and we play new more new games this one kind of gets left behind but i always like to get it out every so often and play it again you, with the introduction of the app which is still still supported by fancy flight games uh you can play it solo um you can play it co-op uh, rather than the way it is played, which is one player versus all. So one player plays the Empire and then all the other players up to four play the uh, heroes. Really nice game. The miniatures are great, really, for um, for how old the game is, for number one. And um, they're um, single mould, obviously. Um, but yeah, they're really nice miniatures. Um, so I've really enjoyed painting up all those. And um, yeah, I've got... A huge chunk of it, so all in that bag down there. Um, so from Bespin to Hoth to Coruscant. Um, uh, in fact, I, I I I tell a lie. I haven't got everything. I do not have Lothal. I don't have. I've got the whole Spectre Ops, um, but I don't have. Um, no, I don't have Lothal expansion. So I might have to get that. Right, another couple of games which are now out of print, I believe. And the first one is Star Wars. The card game, which is an LCG, you'll notice that Eric M. Lang um, is on the front of this one, which is, you know, a big part of it. Um, and you really, it's a really nice card game. It's an LCG, so a living card game. So different to a CCG where you get like uh, expansion packs and you know exactly what cards are in that. And then you can build up decks. Uh, you've got the four factions in here. Um so you got the rebels, the uh, well, you've got a few more actually, to be honest. Uh, you've got the rebels, you've got the empire, you've got the Jedi, and you've got the Sith. So you've actually got a, a few different ones. And then effectively, it's a deck builder. So you're uh, building your deck before you do um, missions. And then there's objectives that you've got an objective deck um, that you're trying to take out from the other opponent. And then um, you've got your character cards, support cards, and all the rest of that, just like most deck builders or card games the only issue i've got with this although you know i haven't got much of it i've got the core game and i think a couple of expansions is that i haven't seen any kind of like uh, fancy flight have done with their more recent living card games where you've got 
proper different objectives which mix the game up massively i'm sh i'm sure this probably does the same to be honest um but yeah lord of the rings and uh marvel champions have certainly mixed things up when they come out with new expansions they really mix up the objectives so rather than five cards just showing the objectives they're changing the game completely and how you play it which i really really appreciate um this i didn't feel had that but it's a really solid game and it's in its current form so um if you can get hold of a core game is is the differences the other big differences with this compared to the more recent ones is this is not is not co-op this is um competitive two player so you're actually playing one against each other okay um whereas arkham horror and all the rest of it are all of course co-op so if you're interested in a competitive kind of lcg you can still buy some some of this stuff on online and and you know um seconds market or whatever uh, i highly recommend trying to get a core copy um it's a really really nice game okay and then the final game i wanted to talk about in the star wars ffg universe where is it is i should have really um there we go is was their RPG, okay, their Star Wars role-playing. Now, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure they, they've discontinued all their RPG now, um, but Edge of the Empire was the first one. It's it's less about kind of Jedi Knight, being a Jedi Knight and going around and uh, being uber-powerful. They did bring out, they've got three different arms of this, I think, and one of them is about more about the Force and Jedi powers. This is more about just playing characters in the RPG world, which um, which are in the Star Wars world. And um, now, this, I tell you what, I've played a few different RPGs, and this has got a real, really good mechanic. Where um, being Fancy Flight, of course, it's not your normal D dice that you use. You use these custom dice. And they basically got successes and failures, uh, or successes and blocks, if you like. Um, and they've also got advantages and disadvantages. And that's it. That's the only four things on the dice. When you try and do a test, you try you roll dice. And depending on difficulty, depends on how many opposing dice you roll compared to your skill set. And the more skilled you are, the more of these green dice you get. Or they might get upgraded to the yellow dice, which have got more beneficial results. If you have more successes than failures, you pass. But you might pass with disadvantage or advantage. And what this lends itself to is, is pure narrative play with all of your dice roll. It's so cool. Um, so you, you try and do a test. You roll the dice off. Depending on the results, you, you basically ask the players to describe what happens. And then you can tweak it depending as, as the game's master, depending on um, what, where the results would make that or not. And there's like crits in there as well. So you might get a crit. You can only get that on the yellow dice, for example. It's that symbol there. It's this symbol here. Um, there's a one in 12 chance, you know. And if you get that, it's uber massive. And depending on what the feat is you're trying to do, the players can really be creative about what they're doing. It is so cool. And then, it, of course, it, it gives you all the information you need for different classic enemies. You've got the Gamorrean guards, for example, here. Uh, Gamorrean thugs and their stats. You've got space combat, uh, which which and it comes, the core set the core set box came with little tokens and stuff, which was really cool. Um, and they did so starship combat. You have different positions than your starship. Uh, some can be gunners, some can be pilots, and you you're still using these dice to do all of the all of the play. Um, but yeah, real fantastic. So you know if you like Star Wars and you like RPGs. You know, this might be worth trying to get a copy of. Uh, I, I think there are other Star Wars RPGs out there, but this is real simple. Um, I love the dice mechanic in it and the way you do tests, the way you fire your weapons and all the rest of it. It works really well. And then you've got like light and dark side, which is constantly changing uh, as you play through the campaign. Um, there are, of course, uh, the main core book. There are expansions with stories and everything else. But you can do your own thing. And what I've done is mixed in Imperial Assault with, and in fact, X-Wing, with the Edge of the Empire, the Star Wars RPG, to have like battle maps that you can kind of see uh, where, where what's kind of going on and the objectives and I've got the characters and everything. So it's kind of like utilizing all the stuff I've got. Space combat, of course, these are great just to show 
you're not doing any measurements or anything like that. You just try and show relative positions of things and what's kind of going on. Um, and it just brings about that little bit of, oh, that's really quite cool. I'm, I'm in this, the, the cockpit of Slave 1, for example, and I'm flying around. I'm in the cockpit of an X-Wing. I'm coming around, I'm shooting this, this TIE fighter. I'm trying to get towards the back of it, get the advantage and stuff like that. Um, really, really nice RPG. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's now been discontinued. So it's, it's going to be quite, it's going to be harder and harder to get hold of this stuff, which is a real shame. Um, but yeah, another Star Wars game by that Fantasy Flight have done. Um, expect to see more stuff from Fantasy Flight and Star Wars. I think we'll see a much more from Outer Rim. I think we might see some expansions um, from that because we've got like the core, I don't know how many characters are in it. Um, but you've got the core characters, core ships, but perhaps they'll move that on to just expand it. Um, Rebellion, I mean, it's just a classic. It, that is my top pick. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend. Depends what kind of gamer you are, what your group is. Are they actually tabletop miniatures game? In which case, you probably know about Star Wars Legion, to be completely honest. Um, but there's a mass content, a mass amount of content for that. And it's quite widely played, so you can probably find game groups to play. You certainly can find tournaments as we, hope, fingers crossed, ease out of COVID. Um, X-Wing Miniatures is a bit older now. Um, it's still got a huge fan base. Again, you can find games being played all over the place. Um, but I think it's coming a little less out of uh, popularity, um, you know, than, than what it was. Uh, Armada certainly is, I think is overtaken uh, X-Wing now as a bit more popular, a bit more played around, certainly the UK. Um, Imperial Assault, as I say, I think that's, that's one that's that's not being produced anymore, um, but it's an absolutely fantastic game. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a 2.0 or a little bit like what they've done with Descent. They bring out a new big box that's tied into an app. Uh, I would I would be I would I would I put money on it that they would actually be doing that uh, to produce something uh, that's in the Star Wars universe that has the same idea as as what this is. I think it's just so good. Okay, so yeah, then then my thoughts on Star Wars games. Um, again, you can pick up most of this stuff readily. The only one is the RPG, the card game, of course, and a little less so Imperial Assault, but everything else you can basically get from your local gaming store. Um, certainly, I mean, these two are massively popular, so you should be able to pick them up from anywhere. This is new, newish. So again, a lot can be found pretty much everywhere. Rebellion should be able to find in any game store, to be honest. Um, but yeah, they're my, they're my thoughts on Star Wars games, tabletop games from Fantasy Flight Games. The great news is there's lots to choose from um, and you can really sink your teeth in many of these uh, and spend all your time just playing that one game. So Legion, you can easily spend all your free time playing Legion collecting the armies, painting them up, modeling, creating scenery, creating tables. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's pretty much limitless, this. Uh, but there's a lot of money to be invested in this one. X-Wings, similar in a way. Although you can get the cards which make, you know, which make really, really powerful combos. So you tend to see that groups in the competitive scene uh, will play very specific s squad lists. Um, so it hasn't... It's got a little bit of an issue with that. Um, but if you just want to play it casually, it's, it's a great little uh, dogfighting combat game. So, yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully that gives you... If you didn't know about these, I'm sure most people will have known about these. But if you didn't know about these games, uh, they're my little thoughts on Star Wars games from Fancy Flight Games. So keep gaming, guys, and see you next time.